beautiful dawns and golden sunsets are a magnificent spectacle. But if we could see them as what they are for many animals, they would be the moment that marks the start and the end of a day of hard work. Nature can be compared to a large building company where architects, surveyors, masons, and carpenters The first thing that happens at a construction site is digging. Animals offer us a range of digging systems on which present day machinery is based. Each kind of soil has its difficulties, so there are experts for each type of soil. On the beach, a builder is constantly fighting the sea. There's nothing worse in this job than having to fight against water and humidity. These crabs, however, have decided to live underground, right on the seashore. Underground living avoids many risks and offers a comfortable temperature. But this way of life is not for lazy people. The homes they dig fall in with each wave, so they have to repair them continuously. The crumbling goes on forever and digging in this fine sand is exhausting. Luckily, crabs have many legs, 10 legs, and two of them have become the ultimate tool, a serrated shovel that can move and dig a lot of sand in a very short time. At low tide, they can rest. It's the only moment when they can relate socially or feed. The ocean sets the workday for digging crabs in two six-hour shifts, with no weekends off, no summer vacation, and of course, the night shift is included in the payroll. In addition, there are no trade unions. They certainly have a right to be fed up. Sand is also the star of the desert. And here the grains of sand are even finer. And two hours after dawn, the heat has stolen all the humidity from the surface. Therefore, digging in hot sand requires a very complex and delicate system to carry out the work successfully. The desert gecko has been living on burning and slippery sand for so long that among many other things, it has learned to take its work calmly. Here, rushing around isn't efficient. Speedy or careless work only generates more sand slides. There are no waves, but the sand is so dry that it seems to be liquid. Besides, the outside temperature discourages any hard effort. This is a more painstaking job that requires some special tools. To perform such detailed work, you have to park the bulldozer and go back to the shovel. In this case, 
to some very small and well-designed shovels. Many swimming species count webs between their fingers among their evolutionary adaptations. In a place that is the complete opposite of water, the idea of some rowing fins is really efficient. Their purpose may be different, but the usage is very similar. In fact, what is this gecko doing? Is it swimming or digging? This expert has a tiny shovel on each hand and each foot. To use the four of them at the same time, the gecko needs to be perfectly synchronized. The systematic order in which the gecko moves its extremities when building its home is almost comical. However, its technique is most appropriate for the sand it's tunneling through. Each centimeter the gecko penetrates inside the dune is another centimeter that protects it from death. The only safe way for the gecko to escape the heat is to get underground. The safest and quietest place in the world. There are more living beings underground than you may think, and noisy neighbors are everywhere. This streamlined European wasp is of the Amophile genus. Don't be mistaken by its slender appearance. In fact, it's a great drilling engineer. In Spain, when summer begins, if you know the wasp's favorite sites, you can watch it working on the ground, looking for a soft and sandy area to build its nest there. The amophile wasp selects its site carefully. Its children will have to develop inside the crypt it's digging, away from temperature variations and hidden from any predators. The wasp is most vulnerable to attack at this time. It must work quickly to complete the gallery as fast as possible. The wasp hauls the loose earth in its jaws and scatters it around, like a prison camp escape movie, to prevent anyone from discovering its plan. Once the wasp has finished tunneling, it collects small pebbles and temporarily covers the entry. It's very careful. It may even scatter sticks and leaves to camouflage the door. After this masterful lesson in disguise, the amophile wasp left. Where did it go? Five hours later, the wasp returned with the answer between its legs. It was hauling a paralyzed caterpillar, a forced guest for its underground room. If the wasp is able to get the caterpillar into the tunnel, of course. After the wasp has put the caterpillar in the nest, it will lay a tiny wasp egg on it so its child will have fresh, living food when it's born. The mother only had to cover up the hole again, and it did it in a very special way. Very few animals are able to do what the wasp did. It used a tool.
It was thought until relatively recently that the use of tools was a distinguishing feature of mankind and that the main difference between the intelligence of animals and men was language and the ability to use selected or handmade tools. For millions of years, however, the Amophile wasp has selected stones of different sizes and shapes to achieve different results when reshaping the soil it has dug up. The wasp takes them between its jaws and, vibrating like a machine, carefully compresses the soil. A pneumatic hammer is essential to compress loose soil. When it's done skillfully, nobody can distinguish between the pre-digging and post-compression soil. The wasp thus prevents parasites or predators from discovering its treasure. Nobody would find any soft areas if they tested the hardness of the ground. Digging, camouflaging, anesthetizing and using tools an unbeatable combination. Birds are rightly considered to be great builders. In addition, carpenters, masons, and other professionals employ many human inventions based on their beaks and their use of it. But the main contribution of these winged masters was that they taught our master builders the importance of having a tailored structure under each building. In Botswana, the very social weaver birds use the largest dwelling structures they build the largest and most crowded nests in the world. Instead of selecting a branch to support their home, they use the whole tree. Branches are the main beams, and the tree trunk is the main pillar. The larger the supporting structure is, the larger and heavier the building is. The best cover is a huge conical shape designed to shed the rain and to prevent excess weight. Most human roofs are similar. The weaver bird's nest shape may evolve with time depending on the resident's wishes. Nests may even develop artistic shapes. These birds use and enlarge the house where they were born and never leave it. In consequence, more than 300 individuals may share this super nest. The commune may weigh a ton and boast more than a century of constant usage. Each couple and their children live in their own private apartment. The apartment's entrance is through the basement and in spite of the noise in the community, each couple enjoys a certain degree of privacy. All the neighbors are on good terms. Look, here's the child from 2B, the husband from 4A, the couple from 5A. They keep going in and out, in and out, and everybody works in the same strange and curious activity. Social weaver birds find in their building the best protection against extreme weather. Here, the differences in temperature between day and night may exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Thanks to the thermal inertia of this gigantic estate, within the colony, the temperature is stable and the rooms are insulated against extreme temperatures. It's likely the amenities of the weaver birds' modern society have led them to use the same nest throughout the year, contrary to the traditional temporary usage of most birds only during breeding. The colony cooperates every day in the search for food, 
or keeping the watch over the block. The birds will live together all their lives, except when the excess weight of the nest brings down the tree or the structure caves in. And this only happens when the dry straw gets soaked with water during the very worst storms. The thing that is a danger for weaver birds is a blessing for other birds. Earth and water equal mud. An easily molded material that is easily found in nature. Something that intelligent birds would not ignore when looking for new building materials that harden when mixed with little sticks. When the first adobe hut was built, certain birds watched over these skillful human imitators to see if they had copied their revolutionary building material well. Getting mud may be easy, although you can't always find a puddle near your building site. On the other hand, your supply source can't be very far away either. Mud is a fast drying material and you can't use it when it's dry. Besides, carrying it in your mouth isn't easy. Once you've selected the mud, you have to work quickly or the heat may cut your work short. It's an easy material to work with and it sticks to almost any surface under the right conditions. But you have to take into account that each part is heavy and that to keep a just finished nest from crumbling, you have to wait till the first bricks dry out because these bricks will support the rest. We're talking of bricks, adobe bricks, because swallows do not use just mud. They usually mix it with little bits of grass or straw. They not only make use of what nature has made available, but they have prepared the first technical formula for a building material, adobe. The correct mixture of earth, water, and dry grass makes it possible to build houses for a bird or a man. With the same technique as the swallows, man has built villages and cities where we have lived the most interesting, longest, and most sustainable part of our history. But it was neither a bird nor an intelligent mammal that first discovered mud's possibilities. Since much earlier times, Insects have worked and shaped mud very skillfully. Certain termites take the wet earth into their mouths in order to shape their galleries and mounds. Termites don't use adobe in their macro structures, but rather chemical products. Mixed with the termites' complex saliva, each mud ball turns into a cement-hard mini-brick when dry. They build nests that reach heights of up to 15 meters above the ground. On a human scale, they are like six kilometer high skyscrapers. In comparison with termite mounds, many of our large cities are small. Moreover, the order, sanitation, and safety of a city of many millions of homo sapiens can't be compared with the order, sanitation, and safety of a termite mound with the same number of millions of inhabitants. In nature, size and design are not random. Since millions of years ago, 
The shapes created by living beings are guaranteed by the most demanding quality control authority, evolution. The chambers built by potter wasps to shelter their larvae involve a perfectly calculated design and production technique. One shouldn't be surprised to find that the best designed materials are so similar. Since ancient times, humans have used pottery and defined civilizations and cultures by their pots and pottery artifacts. It's likely, once again, that the muse that inspired human potters was a lower animal called the potter wasp. We could learn an enormous amount from insects. As you can see in this documentary series, some of the most important patents really should belong to them. But this is how history is written, and it's written on paper. It's said that paper was invented in China almost 2,000 years ago. Chinese paper or Egyptian papyrus, it's the same thing. In spite of the centuries gone by, the basis of paper making is always the same, extracting plant fibers from wood to transform them into precious paper pulp. It's a process that common wasps have performed since ancient times with no destruction of the environment nor pollution. At the beginning of the dry season, wasps set off in a mad search for dry grass or old branches. Once they have selected the raw wood, they keep scraping the pieces until they get the raw material. The wood is chewed and processed in their mouths and mixed with saliva until the fibers and cellulose are softened. Wasps thus obtain an easily shaped pulp, liquid cardboard, a crude kind of paper, but paper nonetheless. Paper has been employed in so many different ways that we would need too much paper to describe all of them. The same thing is true of wasps and other insects. They've invented so many things that they would put the most ingenious inventor to shame. Bees, cousins of the wasps, have developed wax, a hydrophobic building material that is fully waterproof and heat insulating. In addition, it includes many complex antibiotic systems that keep the hive free of infections. And what about honey? The condensed food par excellence. That's a lot of inventions. But before getting overwhelmed by insignificant insects, you must remember another magnificent detail. The hexagonal cells. Both bees and wasps use them. The reason is really quite simple. The hexagon is the geometric shape that uses the least space and material while providing the greatest structural strength. A honeycomb may weigh over a hundred kilos and can still stand on just a few cells. The turtle's strong shell is also made of hexagons. The six sides of each plate are very suited to making a hemisphere, a vaulted figure like a dome or an arch. The forms employed the most often in architecture to distribute pressure. Pressure is distributed equally towards the sides through a curve. This makes it possible to support heavy weights over an opening. In the case of the turtle, pressure may be exerted by the jaws of a large carnivore. Turtles are not impregnable fortresses, 
but their evolutionary age confirms their successful design. Other species, like so many other engineers, seem to understand a lot about volume, surface area, and geometric shapes. These living beings control and manage variables pertaining to the theorems of both Thales and Pythagoras. Especially when their living work is themselves. With just a little observation, we can find natural spirals, polyhedrons, or spheres among animals. Figures made without a ruler or a compass, but that correspond to mathematical equations. We have seen skillful animals using tools, manufacturing materials, and designing all kinds of structures. Many of them carry this information in their genes, and they just follow their instincts. Other animals have to learn the techniques, and therefore have to be able to process the mental images of their devices. Sometimes nature is the true architect that has selected the most innovative blueprints in order for its creatures to face life successfully. For man, it has been even easier. We only had to watch nature and copy it with guaranteed success. The guarantee of the most important experience wildlife experience.